friends, Romans, countrymen. Lend me your ears and eyes, because this is a video. <laughs> Welcome to National Treasures Interviews, uh, the interview series based on the hit, in certainly my parents' mind, podcast National Treasures, where I, Will Duggan, and you, Laura Lex, uh, go on nice days out. The world is on fire, but doesn't get us down. We can't go outside. We're bringing outside inside, like a nice house plant, but one that doesn't need much water in and flourishes <laughs> once <laughs> Welcome, friends, Hello. to the beginning of the new, not yet, Laura, Sorry. of the new time. Now say hello. Hello! <laughs> you seem, you're hyped today, Will. This is good. That, that was a good one, wasn't it? That, that was, was good... that was lively. You I feel like two... a man on the edge. <laughs> yeah, I really am. My eyes are wild. <laughs> they are. It's like that. You're excited, but I don't feel safe. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited, but someone's getting cut up into yeah. pieces. How's your Sunday been, mate? I had a really nice day. I've been Good. at work, uh, as I am every day, but it is uh, very quiet at the moment at work because mm. no planes are going. So I watched the entirety of the um, Star Trek Lower Decks, the animated comedy series about like Star Trek, which is really, really good. Um, and then I caught up with WandaVision. How's your day been? Um, pretty good. I've, I did some work today. Um, and then I played with my dog. I was hoping she'd be all excited about the snow and I could video it and she, she's a puppy, but we, I, we went outside and I put her in the snow and she just stood there looking at me like, why have you done this? It was warm indoors. Now we're out here. So we came back in and that's pretty much all I've done. Today, we are joined by a wonderful guest and an awesome twitcher. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to call them, but it's just a fun word, isn't it? Um, that's a person that goes on Twitch for everybody like me that's only just discovered what Twitch is. Um, our lovely guest today tells Shetland folk tales and plays Dungeons and Dragons and is a comedian, which is basically a list of all the things that make me want to be friends with a person. So I'm thinking after today, I might have a new best friend. Sorry, Will. Uh, now, but I, I do those three things. Yes. All right, I well, play Dungeons Dragons with you. Yeah, okay. All right, then, fine. We'll be a tri triumvirate of friends. Um, ladies and gentlemen, viewers of all shapes and sizes and everybody in between, please can I welcome to your screens, Marie Elaine Robertson. Hey, hello. Hi, thanks so much for joining us. Where are you telling us about today? Oh, I'm telling you about a site that I absolutely love and I've always loved it and I got the pleasure to work in it for two seasons is the Sumbra Head Lighthouse in Shetland. Oh, I can show you where it is. Ooh. So this is Shetland. Yeah. Is this colourful? And it's right down at the very bottom tip. The very bottom. Okay. Why do you love this lighthouse so much? Um... I think it's a it's a really special site because it encompasses a lot of special elements of Shetland, I think. When people are like, what's your favourite thing about Shetland? I'm always like, oh, uh, everything. <laughs> and this lighthouse kind of has it because it's a, it's a, it just turned 200 actually. So happy uh -huh. birthday, Simper Head. Happy and it's birthday. A, the first Stevenson lighthouse to be built in Shetland, who are prolific right, lighthouse builders. Oh my gosh, I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's great because when it was set up as a tourist site, it also incorporated not just the lighthouse and that history, but also the wildlife because it actually sits right in the middle of an RSPB reserve. So there's all kinds Ooh. of wildlife. There's all kinds of birds and sea mammals. And it's just quite a special, special spot right at the tip of Shetland. So you're sitting at the very, very edge of a cliff and on one side it's North Atlantic and on one side it's North Sea and they crash into one another below the lighthouse as well. So you get these rips out into the water. Oh, amazing. Sorry, I that's a go long one to answer. <laughs> no, this is exactly what we're here for. See, I sort of jumped onto the internet to do a little bit of um, research just so that I had a vague idea of what we're talking about. And the first thing I read was like, this is the best place to go in the UK to potentially see killer whales. And I was like, oh, this is the, like of all the places now we've discussed on this, this is where I went. Have you ever seen a killer whale? Yeah, so I, because <gasps> I've lived in Shetland all my life. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. I love the all this. The absolute chilled out way. You're like, yeah, yeah, I've seen a killer way. We're like, mate. Because oh. <laughs> I've lived here all my life and it was only in 2017 that I saw them at work because we get minky whales pop up quite often and you're like, oh, oh that's a minky. Boring. 
They're called the stinky minky. You're like, oh, there's a stinky out to this tooth end. But, um, but one week when I was working there, my brother came because he was cutting the grass there because he also works there now and then. And uh, me and my brother were hanging out. I mean, I was working. And there's a pod of killer whales that started coming in beneath us and swimming. And this was amazing. And then uh, the next day I was about to leave work and all these cars pulled into the car park when the lighthouse was shut. And not the lighthouse, that would be illegal to shut that down, the, the, the <laughs> visitor centre. And uh, some killer whales came up. So again, they swam right around. So that's two times in a week. And then on the Friday when I was working that week, they came again at dinner time to feed on seals. Oh, it was just incredible, wow. like three times in a week. And I mind on the Friday, I was working in the gift shop and this lady came in. So everyone who came into the gift shop, I said, go out, go out to the foghorn and you'll see the killer whales, whales feeding. And I'd seen them twice already that week. So I'd had a quick look. And then I let the other person who's working in the gift shop to go and watch them because they hadn't been there the other shifts. So I was just in the gift shop telling everyone who came in, like, oh, there's killer whales. Go see them. Go see them. Um, and then this one lady came in to the gift shop. And I was like, oh, there's killer whales right now at the foghorn. Go have a look. And she's like, killer whales? I was like, yeah, there's, there's some, a pod of orcas. And she's like, oh, thanks, but no thanks. I was like, no, but they're there right now. And she was like, <laughs> you don't understand. I'm from Florida. We have SeaWorld. Like, I can see orcas whenever I want. Oh, God. And then five minutes later, she came up to the till and said, where even is your tank? And I had no idea what she meant because we actually have a room full of oil storage tanks. And I was thinking, <laughs> in the tank room? And she's like, no, where do the killer whales live? And I was like, in, in the sea. <laughs> I wish I could have thought faster to have some witty yeah. response. But With the lighthouse, my Elaine, now this is, might be a stupid question, but do you ever get a little bit sad that it isn't red and white? Like a classic lighthouse? Or do you like I know it? Like, like you've seen a, like your auntie's bathroom. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> you've met my auntie, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I've been in your auntie's bathroom. No, um, oh, well, I, as a bear, 100%, I thought it was a great shame. But then since working in it and understanding that the yellow and white design is the Stevenson colours, I'm like, oh, mm. it's okay, all a vanity fine. thing, isn't it? They're like, that's my one. <laughs> you are so, saved by me. <laughs> how often does, does it go on every night? How, or is it just on storming? How, how does a light, what's a lighthouse for? <laughs> Oh my god! Like I know I'm it's so to stop. Sorry. I know it's to stop ships getting on the rocks and stuff. But is it just on all every night? That at seven p.m. on a Sunday evening, I've got a guest. What? What's it for? <laughs> What's it doing? <laughs> What's the light? All the background reading I thought I need to do. No, it's very What's low. What's the point of me? <laughs> Maya Lane, you've wasted your life. Thanks for coming on, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it it's goes on the... every night. It's not just when it's foggy or something. Only when there's sea out there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> when it's rained and the water's back. <laughs> when oh. the rocks are looking very sharp. <laughs> there are any ships in tonight? No, great. Leave it off. Fucking save on the bill. <laughs> Only if there's a night time, like, oh, no, sun is gone. Um, <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm not smarter. This is why this is on YouTube and not the television. I don't think this is even smartness. This is, I mean, this is level one lighthouse. What's oh, the I'm fucking sorry, point? I've never, I've never thought about lighthouses very much before. I don't live near a lighthouse. You, you live on a very small island. Sorry, Maya Lane, please answer Laura's brilliant question. <laughs> I should explain the whole site because there's more than yes. just a lighthouse because there's also a foghorn, but let's go one thing at a time. And I bet that's just for when it's foggy. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the light comes on when it gets dark. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe to Natrib's interviews, asking the questions that you didn't deem relevant. <laughs> uh, my lane is the sea there all year round or is it like a seasonal thing you know seasonal don't you fucking join it <laughs> this is me laughing at you there's Aww. no there's no team here 
I kind of want to explain why it's there, but I'm scared in case it sounds really condescending, it's but then fine. I also I feel I should. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, just so the ships know where the land is at night. Yeah. <laughs> what an yeah. incredibly easily thing to Google. Oh, I oh. I just didn't know if it was on every night, that's all. No, that, and... that's fair enough. And it, it changes. <laughs> it's actually quite Don't interesting. In fair enough, you're being so kind. <laughs> but Shetland's quite cool because in Shetland, we, like in summer, we have simmered dim when it never really gets dark. Because we're yeah. so far up north that... Um, the sun goes beneath the horizon, so we don't have the technical midnight sun, mm. but it doesn't get pitch dark because it's just like the end back again. Yeah. So the lighthouse is on for a very brief time in summer, whereas winter it's on almost the entire day. Thank you very much, Will. So that is that is a good it's not just nighttime. But now so so when it was a keeper, they'd go up and light the lamp and turn on the swisher or did it swish all day and you just turned the lamp on? Another twang of West Country there from Laura Alexis Swisher. <laughs> I love it when it comes through. <laughs> That's actually a really good question because um, when lighthouses were first designed, they were just a constant, um, they were a constant light. And it was only the mechanised spinning came in a bit later on. Right. I don't think it was that much later on. I think it was quite soon after it was put in. But the lens used um to shine the light out so there's a lens used to magnify the light and the reason it has to spin even during the day is uh can you guess why actually so the can lens I... even when the light's off the lens has to keep spinning it has to can i have a guess yeah because if it stops it's quite cold it'll freeze and it won't restart no my guess is that it'll do that thing like where you burn ants if it stays in one place, the sun might go through it and be a problem. Yeah, exactly. So if a lighthouse lens stops spinning, it will actually just set fire to whatever it's pointing at. Oh. Including whole buildings. Because they're so powerful. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would make such a good plot in a book, wouldn't it? Like, this is how they killed people or did something by freezing the lighthouse magnet and nobody could work out how the spontaneous combustion started because then they started the whizzer again. That's so genius. a broken lighthouse is essentially an industrial revolution era death ray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is great. You'd have to keep the keepers on side then, wouldn't you? Otherwise they could have been aiming this magnet, not magnet, mag lens at, um, at <laughs> I don't know what to do with my face, uh, just at anywhere in the town that they wanted to destroy, like unstoppable power so yeah. is um is summer ahead open all year or is it like a summer thing for when there's tourists around or because it must be yeah. quite is it quite a tourist base like tourist economy on the island yeah it's quite heavily reliant on tourism i think it goes oil then fishing then tourism and summer ahead it was lovely working there actually because i used to i always used to ask folk what brought them there and mainly tourists, but you get so many Shetlanders coming too, because foxes like to come and see the wildlife. Mm. Shetlanders are quite good for going out and exploring and making the most of what they have. So you get so many local folk coming again and again and again. So it's really nice, actually. Wow, what a lovely senior building. One of the next questions down is, ever caught anyone shagging in the lighthouse? <laughs> <laughs> Is that genuinely a question? Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering Ooh. because it, it obviously it's like a nature reserve and it, so there's quite a lot of land. Hmm. And Laura loves banging in nature reserves. <laughs> <laughs> just want to know, is it worth coming for a holiday? <laughs> oh, that's a good Well, there's a self-catered cottage, so you could do it behind All curtains. Right. But, we don't want uh, self catered you need to use one with you. Because <laughs> self cater yourself anywhere. <laughs> so what can you visit from the visitor centre then? Can you go up the lighthouse tower? Can you see the lamp and stuff? Yeah, so a quick guide to the site. You've got the keepers. So there's three keepers' cottages. One is the RSPB office, where I go and ask them every single question the tourists have asked me about birds. <laughs> um, one is the engine room and fuel storage, which is part of the site to visit in the gift shop. Then you've got two other keepers' cottages. One is accommodation you can stay in, and the other is the kind of informative nature side of it, which tells you all about the wildlife and sea life. Then there's the smithy, because keepers had to shoe horses. I've forgotten my job. And <laughs> that, 
like a Yoli Smithy. And then there's the interpretive center, which is built, which is newer, which is now a cafe. And that also includes a small flat where we have artists in residence. So oh. he's the artist resident every month and they'd be like painting things and it'd be really cool and making films and we'd help them out. And then you could go up the tower as well, but that had to be a guided tour because it's so strict with that northern lighthouse board you'd have to phone a certain number and be like tower is open and then open the tower and then let people in and you had to be with them at all times and somewhere at the base of the tower but it's an incredible tour then you had to phone a certain number and be like tower is closed and uh there's also radar huts from world war ii that i've not even told you about yet oh yes uh, please and, and of these <clears throat> which is the best one for fingering <laughs> I would go with the smithy. <laughs> <laughs> Shoeing horses and fingering lasses. Yes, please. It's got sound effects when you walk in like, dong, dong, dong. <laughs> you could just <laughs> be quite quietly get away with stuff there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, bloody hell, man. I'm going to have a cold That's shower a really after good this. good impression. Hi, it's your weekly interruption. Uh, of us by us uh we just wanted to say thank you to our patrons uh payments are starting to come in now and we've been able to put a little bit of cash towards getting a second microphone for series two that we're planning um so we're really really excited about that thank mainly you very much patrons mainly excited because uh it, we, there's nothing more suspicious than laura and i walking around an art gallery sharing one yeah. lapel mic just go like <laughs> Do you like that? I do, I do actually. Do you like that? Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah, uh, but so. they're pricey. And series two is well underway. We've got guests the likes of James Acaster, Sarah Pascoe, Shappy Corsandi. Rufus uh, Hound. Rufus Hound. We've got some cracking guests ready for series two. So if you haven't subscribed on wherever you get your podcasts, do make sure that you're ready to go for series two. And if you haven't subscribed on patreon.com forward slash national treasures, please do. I'm not going to say I want you to. It sounds uh, uncouth, but I do want you to. And I am uncouth. So thank you. So one of the other things that you do is um, you I, I'm assuming you love it because you do it. But you um, you you tell folk stories and myths and legends and stuff from from Shetland. Um, is there a good story you could share with our viewers? Yeah, there's so many. Um, and I know that you like Kelpie stories, Will. I, I absolutely fucking love Kelpie stories. So I'll tell you um, some Shetland Kelpie stories. In Shetland, we call the water Kelpie a Nuggle. That's N-J-U-G-G-L-E. I love and, it. Uh, it's, love uh, that, so, and for anyone who doesn't know what a Kelpie is, a Kelpie is like a water horse. Uh, I'll be talking about the Shetland version, the Nuggle, so I might be talking about a slightly different variation than the Kelpie. But the Nuggle is a water horse that... To the average person, looks like a beautiful, strong equine beast. And then you get on its back and it'll turn its head and speak to you with a human tongue, like, like now you're mine, mm -hmm. and take you into the depths of a burn, a stream, or a loch and drown you there. Um, for why, I don't know. But that is that what the Kelpie does? Big time. Okay, cool. <laughs> Famous for it. <laughs> that is classic Kelpie <clears throat> nonsense. <laughs> So if you see a horse my... and it turns around and goes, all right, mate, that's a Kelpie. <laughs> that's a Kelpie or a pantomime. No, 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 no. The, no. The, 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 these actors are desperate for the work. They're not going to break character. You can tell I've not done comedy in like a year, isn't it? <laughs> <It's> like, oh, <laughs> <pun."> <laughs> oh, anyway, so one of my favourite stories with the Kelpie is that um, Kelpies are known to reside most in lochs or burns, that's a name for a stream. And in Shetland, people were really reliant on their water mills for grinding corn and meal to make flour. So every community would have two or three water mills dotted along its closest burn. And Kelpies cannot stand the mechanics of man, so they would go in and kick them down and destroy them. Now in one community, the folk had been terrorised by this Kelpie that Nyugal. Do I keep saying Kelpie? Yeah. <laughs> it's your story. You say what you like. Can I show this in Shetland? They'll be like, oh, what? Oh, what is he going to do? 
nonsense word, but um, <laughs> a new girl. So the folk had been to, like terrorized by this new girl. And one lass went out one day to grind some mail into flour. And just as she was getting closer and closer to the mill, she heard this drum, 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 and up came the Nyogal chasing her. So she turned on her heel and she ran to her house. So the Nyogal followed her right to her house and knew exactly where she lived. So it kind of pawed the ground and the briggy stain, the doorstep outside the house, scraping it with its hooves until the girl's dad came out. And the Nyogal said, I demand you give her to me. And if you do, I will never bother your community again. And the father looked at this new girl and the new girl said, and if you refuse, will I know where you live? So you can either give her to me and be left in peace or I'll take her anyway and continue to terrorize you. So the father said, fine, you can have her, but let her have one last night with her family. And with that, the new girl turned around and ran away. So the father went around everyone in the community and they got together at the house and they got the strongest ropes that they had and they tied them in a specific way of kind of nooses at the end of them on the briggy stay in the doorstep and they dropped hay over it. And just as the sun was coming at the end of the night, breaking the darkness coming over the hill, they had the daughter standing just in the doorway of the house and everyone else was hidden out of sight. And up came the new girl running, dun, 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 closer and closer to the house. And it saw the girl standing in the doorway, its eyes widened and it ran even faster up towards her. But as soon as, as soon as it stood on the straw on the doorstep, all the people there grabbed on the ropes and pulled on them, tightening each noose onto each leg of the nugal. It tried to run and pull away, but everyone was hiding it down. And the father came with four horseshoes. He nailed the first one on, holding it while everyone was struggling against the beast. Then the second, then the third, then the fourth. And just as he hammered in the last nail on the last shoe, the Nyogal quietened, grew smaller, shrank down before them. And that was how the first Shetland pony came to be. Oh my goodness, that was so cool. What? Thank you so much for telling us a, a story. A brilliant story. <laughs> oh, that was right. amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I like that story. I also like it because it explains why shattered ponies are so angry all the are time. Are they angry? I was going to ask oh, this. Because funnily enough, I was just watching the um, episode of Parks and Rec last night with Lil Sebastian. So I'm now Swag. completely picturing Lil, <laughs> Lil Sebastian. Sebastian. <laughs> he was a nuggle. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. And people can catch you doing more stories on your Twitch, can't they? Remind yes. us what what to search for. Um. If you search, I think it's twitch.tv forward slash Marilyn Robertson. And I tell stories on a Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and Thursday. Seven on a Monday and Tuesday, and eight on a Wednesday, and Thursday. Or seven Tuesdays D D, but you know, it's all the same. It's just another story. <laughs> yeah. it's a story you know what, Marilyn? But... I'll check it out and I'll put a link on the bottom, <laughs> which you just I clear can send up. It to you. <laughs> Should I be like this? You can check out here. Don't, don't, please don't ever give me editorial uh, direction. <laughs> also, I, here are all the other things. Yes. I, I like you, Maylane, but I don't know who the fuck you think you are <laughs> telling me what I will <laughs> on this video. Sorry, he's crotchety. He's like a human Shetland pony. He's, um... I used to be a Nurgle. <laughs> Somebody nearly... put a magical hoodie on him and he shrank down to a God. tiny Kettering boy I'm, and now he's cross. Globally average height, but <laughs> angry. <laughs> Do you have some um, sombra head questions for us, Mary Elaine? Um, I wonder if these questions are good enough. I can throw in more if you think they're boring. I promise you they're good enough. But actually, after how the conversation's been so far... One of our questions. questions was, ever caught anyone shagging in the lighthouse? <laughs> I think your question... One of Laura's questions was, what's a lighthouse for? <laughs> not I what I ask! <laughs> have even gotten onto the foghorn. I will um, not be slandered like this. Uh, I have enjoyed this so much. <laughs> it's the best day of my year. <laughs> oh. Okay, so... <laughs> Let's Question start. one. How many people a year are caught shagging in the lighthouse? <laughs> so, okay, cool. Question number one. Engineer Robert Stevenson, who designed Sombra Head Lighthouse, 
was also the grandfather of famous author Robert Louis Stevenson. So that's a side note. The main point of the question is... All right, thanks. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> There's so many twists. It's, 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 kind of a, it's kind of a hint for what not to answer. However, when Robert Stevenson first visited Sumberhead to design the lighthouse, he took with him a good friend who was then inspired to write his 1822 novel, The Pirate. Who is the author? <laughs> who wrote The Pirate from 1822? <laughs> Yes. Well. Oh, this is so stupid. Is it Robert Louis Stevenson? With his working title, The Pirate, later called Treasure Island. No. No, that's why I said Robert Louis Stevenson, so you didn't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I said it was a hint for what not to answer. Oh, but... yes. Oh, um, this will. is the happiest tell... I've ever been. Do not edit that out, William Duggan. Do I'll tell not you a edit secret. that out. I'll tell you a secret. Uh, I listened to you, I took it on board, and then in my head I was like, right, don't say Daniel Defoe. Okay, so we're looking for a, an author from 1822, probably a man um, who wrote a book about a pirate. I've got nothing. Um, I'm going to say um, Oscar Wilde. I feel less stupid now. <laughs> I feel like this is a really mini question. No, no, we've oh, very you complain, rarely you answered these it. questions right, don't worry. Okay, it was, will I tell you? Yeah. Please, yeah. Sir Walter Scott. I thought he, he was wrote an explorer. Ivanhoe. Walter Raleigh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or Scott the of the Antarctic. Yeah, okay, I think that's why that, okay, right, okay. Walter Scott, is, I'm learning so much today. Scott's Monument. I thought that was for Scotland. Yeah. No, Scott's one <laughs> My Elaine, don't, don't. <laughs> okay, so I question... heard if you go to the top, you can see the whole of Scotland. When I was uh, about eight years old, I went to the top and uh, it was before this was a bad thing to do. You know, Michael Jackson would grab his crotch and go, boo, boo. I did that off the top. <laughs> and I was like, what are you doing? I was just walking around the top of Scott's Monument. It's 1994, 1994, going boo, 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 off the top of Scott's Monument. <laughs> I'll walk up to really waste that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you still it... couldn't remember Sir Walter Scott for this answer. In 1952, mm -hmm. three K Kelvin diesel engines were added to the site, and they are still running to this day. But what were they originally used for? Hmm. So three diesel engines were installed in the site to power something specifically. What was it? Was it the whizzer? Whizzer? The, the <laughs> going round in circles bit of the lighthouse that is on mm. every time it gets dark. No, sorry. Well, was it um, the houses in Shetland? <laughs> No. Um, um, uh, how about uh, this? Will I give you one clue? Was it a puffin sauna? <laughs> was it the killer whale tank? No. <laughs> was it um was it the furnace in the smithy? No. No. Um I have that clue you mentioned earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the one thing they do, these three giant engines, they're bigger than you and I, they uh, the one thing they do is compress air. What would that be for? Was it for fart storage? <laughs> <laughs> it's eyebrow. Oh, Will, don't pretend you're better than this. There's a weather condition where the lighthouse won't help fog. you. Fog! No, I said fog first. Yeah, Fuck you. you did. Blow away you get the fog. It. Yeah, all right, Will, you can have <laughs> a point. <laughs> it, it's the foghorn. Okay, this question is interesting. <laughs> We've been so good so far. <laughs> uh, the Northern Lighthouse Board is the authority that looks after all the lighthouses in Scotland and Isle of Man. Why is it called Northern? I'm just quickly going to Google where is the Isle of Man. Don't be, don't <laughs> I will be back in a second. It's like um, Isle of Man. Oh, I see. That's not really Northern, is it? 
It was, I can give you a clue. It was formed in 1786, and that is relevant to why it's called the Northern Lighthouse Board. It was formed when? In 1786. Um, oh, oh, I know why. I don't want to tell you, but I do know why. <laughs> so you I'll, just I'll, hit the point. I'll just hit the point. Okay. Not how quizzes work. Uh, is it something to do with Ireland? Nope. Nope. Northern. Is it something you won't find online, but the keepers tell keepers and then the keepers tell me. (laughs) (laughs) It's a fact. Go on then, Will. Are you going to answer or not? I was lying. Oh. Because Um, if they've ever episode of QI, I'd be like, it's because they're in the north. And rah, 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 rah. It's the closest I can get to being on QI. The, that. Um, the Northern Lighthouse Board. I've got it. They are the lighthouses in the UK where it is possible at, during the year to see the Northern Lights. Well, that's really nice, but no. Do you want to be friends or not? Because I... <laughs> remember, all these lighthouses are in Scotland. The Jacobites, Scottish the Civil fucking War. Jacobites, the Jacobite Rebellion. They, 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 they're just, they, oh, sail Bonnie boat like a bird on the wing. Onward the sailors cry. <laughs> Carry the man that was born to be king over the sea to not Shetland, but Bethlehem. <laughs> Jacobites, the Jacobites. Yes, they didn't want any um, nationalism. So rather than being the Scottish Lighthouse Board, they call them the Northern. Yeah. Ah. Where do you stand on the Jacobites? <laughs> on their necks. Um, <laughs> All right, mate. <laughs> is that not the right? Here she, here she no. is. The Kingdom of Wessex got on a fucking opinion. <laughs> I think Shetland was still being like, are we going to go back to Norway now? Or what's happening? <laughs> Who's shall having us for it? Christmas? <laughs> shall I, shall I the... keep my song in? Yeah. Uh, so that's 2 nil to you, Will. So, Marie Elaine, if people are in love with the idea of Sunbrahead, which I, how could they not be after everything we've um, ruined your lovely stories with, um, what could they watch on TV or listen to or read a book set there? Like, is there anything that they can kind of, we can whet our appetite for the place with? Yeah, so do you know the Shetland TV series sh- show called Shetland? <laughs> It really is a hub of creative minds, isn't it, the Shetland Islands? Hey, that's the BBC. They call it Shetland. What do we call the ponies? Shetland ponies? What do we call a TV show? Shetland, I reckon. Have you ever seen the Shetland Sheepdog? Yeah, well, the Sheepdog. Was it from Shetland? <laughs> sheepdog. <laughs> do you know what we call our comedy night? Shetland comedy. Yes. <laughs> I didn't yeah, know that. You but, uh, when you translate our big cleaning festival in the spring, it's just spring clean. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it is hit after hit after hit. So, this, we'll watch this, the show called Shetland. That will tell you everything no, you need to know a, about it's, Shetland. It's this massive, massive house. <laughs> this massive house with a light on the top. What do we, a lighthouse? Absolutely, let's do that. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, it's a, it's a really famous BBC TV show uh, with Douglas Henschel as the main guy. It's a murder mystery, Scandi Tartan Noir mashup mm. where lots of murders happen in Shetland. And I think there's a series where the lighthouse is filmed lots exterior and interior when it was meant to be a hotel. Mm. And it was the best days of work of my life because I just had to go to set and eat the food in the catering truck and not make any noise. So. Ah, uh, amazing. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we can watch Shetland and get a sense of what it's like at the lighthouse. I'm in the pilot as a drunk person sleeping. Uh, um, right, I'm seeking this out now. <laughs> amazing. Thank you so much for coming on Thank to tell us all on. about Sumbra Head and the lighthouse. Um, if people want to find you and your streams and stuff, how, what's the best social media for them to follow you on? I think Twitter's quite good, and then you have less to type because it's Twitter forward slash Marilyn R. Um, or I will Twitch, appear because that's oh, will this <laughs> like, or Twitch? 
Uh, thank you so so much <laughs> thank you very much for joining us thank you so much for uh, having me lovely viewers wave at your screen we will say goodbye to Marilyn Robertson Ta-da. well we really um spoiled a nice chat about a lovely place there we did very well at that I would say that we enhanced you know <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. This has been the National Treasures interview series uh, with us chatting to Mary Elaine Robertson about Sombra Head Lighthouse um, and our nature place. We should go. Genuinely, I really want to go. Oh, I thought I thought you were meaning like we should go. Like we should stop the no. video. I thought you were like we should go. I really want to so go. I've had enough. No, you and yeah, I we... host this podcast, so we go to nice places. <laughs> Um, giddy. <laughs> it's called National Treasures. We've done a series. This is actually part of it. It's a side project we're doing. Yep. You and I should have a journey <laughs> yes. to Shetland. Yes, we will. Oh, God. It's been a long bloody week, hasn't it? We will. We're, we'll go. We'll stick it on the list for the next series. Um, please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Treasures Pod. Absolutely. That yes. is it. And email us at nationaltreasurespodcast at gmail.com. You've got that one down now. Well yes, done. Yes, I have. I actually use that one. And um, and don't forget to subscribe to us on Patreon for all the extra stuff that doesn't make it into the videos and extra stuff from the podcast. And you can even get knitted things from me. I'll write you a song. Yeah. For money. For £400 uh, pounds a month, you can live with Will. Uh, <laughs> we've been Laura and Will. We will be back next time. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.